Earth Files, the award-winning news site with the latest updates in science, environment, and real X-Files. Podcasting in-depth reports beyond the 6 o'clock news by Emmy Award-winning journalist Linda Moulton Howe. On October 10th, 2009, I received an email from Kenneth John Parsons, chairman of the British Earth and Aerial Mysteries Society. It said, quote, Our society has videotaped shot at night of a UK farm animal abduction, where you can see the helpless creature as it goes up into the craft, close quote. Ken Parsons helped me make contact with the videotaper, Derek Bridges, 69 years old and a retired auto mechanic who has lived in Overton, Hampshire, England since 1964. About a mile from Derek's home is the large 2,500-acre Laverstoke Park Farm, owned and managed by former South African auto racing driver Jody Schechter. In addition to cattle, wild boars, pigs, sheep, and poultry, Mr. Schechter imported a herd of water buffalo from Romania and now has 1,500 of the large animals at Laverstoke as well. The farm even sells water buffalo milk. Derek told me it was on Monday, September 28th at 11 p.m. He was getting ready to retire when he looked out his bedroom window and saw a dark red light flashing above a Laverstoke field. Derek said he tried to see what was making the red light by looking through his binoculars. He couldn't figure it out. Suddenly, the dark red light began to brighten, and Derek got his videotape camera. He told me he held back the window curtain with one hand while he balanced the camera in the other hand without a tripod. So the video is shaky and he wasn't sure what he had taped. Derek is friends with Ken Parsons and went to Ken's house to see the video on a bigger TV screen. The two men decided they could see a large animal dangling below the bright light. Was it a cow? Was it a water buffalo? Ken Parsons and Derek Bridges sent me a video clip that I have at my website, earthfiles.com, in my report, High Strangeness in Overton and Basingstoke, Hampshire. I have also included in that report some still frames from the video for clarity. The next day at twilight on September 29th, Derek stood at his bedroom window again looking out at the field. To his amazement, three or four helicopters showed up flying around as if searching for something. I asked Ken Parsons if he would inquire with Laverstoke Farm about missing animals. We learned that in the week of September 28th, two cows were found dead, cause unknown, and I'm still waiting for more information about any missing water buffalo. Derek also remembered a man living in Basingstoke about six miles up the road who had a close encounter with a craft in 2007. With Ken Parsons' help, I interviewed that eyewitness. He is Chris Reed, 31 years old, a British truck driver. To help me understand what he saw, Chris sent me some sketches, which are included in this report at earthfiles.com. High strangeness began for Chris on Saturday, August 4, 2007, at around 11 p.m., He had been driving his truck all day and had finally returned to his top-floor apartment to eat some dinner on the balcony. Here now is Chris Reed with What Happened Next. I noticed something out the corner of my eye. It was a purple-reddish orb. It was about 250 yards away from me, and it was hovering just above the roofs of the houses. And I was focused on this orb of light, It started to change color, went from a purple, it was like flames in the air, and then as it turned to a more reddish color, and that's when it illuminated the craft that it was attached to, like the very front of the craft was where the flames were, like an energy source. It was kind of reflecting the redness of the flame. It was very stealthy, red, metallic looking, and like lines underneath the craft, And the tail went up at a point at the back. And along the top was these triangular-shaped windows, which were blacked out. There was no noise coming from the craft. There seemed to be some kind of a a force field or a barrier around the craft. 
And you say that because why? Because I could just see something around the craft. It was away from the atmosphere, like in a bubble. Was it the way heat waves looked from a hot road? Yeah, almost, yeah. Like something around it. It's very hard to explain. And it was very stealthy looking. It was very like something out of the future. The windows? The windows, there were several. There was about five, six, seven windows on the top. Triangle shape. The front window suddenly became see-through and stopped above like a house. 50, 70 feet above a house, it stopped. And a purple light, like spotlight, shone down onto a house for five seconds. And that's why I I was absolutely gobsmacked. It was like a beam of light just came down on a house. And then five seconds, it disappeared. And then the front window became see-through. There was this alien grey, you know, the big black eyes, looking down at what he was doing at the house. This alien grey being was looking to his right down, then looked up directly at me. And this is where it sounds a bit crazy, but this is what he did. He looked at me. He looked back to his left. I couldn't see anybody else in the craft, but it seemed like he was communicating with someone else in the craft. He looked back towards me, and he poked out his tongue. He had a sort of a long... (laughs) He had this really long tongue, like a pointy tongue, like he jokingly poked out his tongue at me. (laughs) It sounds crazy, but that is what he did. He did that twice. Twice? Yeah. And, and he smiled. I could see the whiteness of his teeth. I, mean, I could see what he was wearing. A shiny black suit. A very, very slender being. Tiny, thin, really long arms, really long fingers, big black eyes. Well, Chris, yeah. what went through your mind when this gray being in this tight, shiny black suit sticks his long pointed tongue at you twice and grins? I assume at that point, the whole world or parts of the world were being invaded by these beings. That This was going on everywhere. They're here. I just stared. I didn't know what else to do. I was just standing there staring. And I said a few swear words like, what the are you doing here? <laughs> you know, type of thing. And I could not believe it. I could not believe what I was seeing. I felt kind of nervous and scared of what I was seeing. And I didn't want it to see me because it would have flown away or something. So I kind of hid from it. But this being still saw you. Yeah, he looked at me. He poked out his tongue, did that twice, and he kind of smiled. He waved his hand. At that point, the window turned black again. I couldn't see him. And then what happened? And then the craft, there was a slight rumble noise. And then the craft slowly moved to the right about three, four hundred yards. The craft then stopped. It turned towards me. The light, the red light, the flames got bigger, so I couldn't see the craft behind it. These red flames became a white ball of light, and the whole craft and the flames like dematerialized into this white ball of light, and then, like a bullet out of a gun, shot away at incredible speed. It was really strange. It was like something opened up behind it, like something moved through the atmosphere behind it, like a tunnel. It was very strange. I think I understand. It took off very rapidly with something between you and it that seemed to be either like a tunnel or caused it to disappear. Yeah, the craft seemed to disappear in a tunnel or something like a tunnel opened up behind it. It's very hard to to, to describe. What did you do next? Did you call any authorities? I ran around my balcony screaming. I phoned my parents. I phoned my brother. I phoned everybody I knew. What were you saying? I was excited, really, you know, just stunned. What were you telling your parents and your friends that you had seen? I said I'd seen this being, an alien, big-eyed alien, alien gray, and I told them everything every single detail. I actually thought that perhaps because I'd seen them that night, they were going to come back, and I was quite frightened that they'd come back when I was asleep, because I stayed awake for three days. You didn't sleep for three days after? I stayed
stayed awake on my balcony, like, waiting for them to come back. And so I really wanted to see them again. I wanted to make contact. I wanted to understand, who are they? What are they doing here? You know. And when this being stuck his tongue out twice, did you get any mental impressions as if it might be conveying something telepathically to you? No, he poked his tongue out like, ah, you see me. He kind of smiled. Yeah. <laughs> when you finally did get to sleep, did you have any dreams about this being? Occasionally I'd get like a, a surge of energy in my head sometimes when I'm trying to sleep. It's as if my head is a magnet and another magnet is coming near it. Do you have any residual feeling about the intent of that being? I felt really cold. I didn't smile back at him. I was actually giving him a very nasty look. What are you doing here? Who the hell are you? You know, alien in a craft. What the hell, you know? Right. When you think about that being in that highly unusual craft that was capable of putting a purple beam down on a house, and the being even went so far as to stick out its pointed tongue at you twice. It's a lizard-type tongue, yeah. It was a lizard-type tongue. Yeah, it was kind of pointy, like you'd see a lizard. And very long. It was, yeah, it was, I estimate it was probably six or seven inches long. I've spoken to one or two people who have had abductions with greys and had conscious memory of these beings, and they say they don't have these tongues. So I don't know what kind of race or where it come from. And it sounds like this was reptilian looking? I don't know. I mean, it, it's, its skin was very pale skin. It didn't look scaly or anything like that. It looked like a very smooth skin, um, but the tongue was very pointy. It was very pale or white. A white tongue, yeah. I mean, big black eyes. It was very kind of, not something you really want to see in a dark night. But. <laughs> that you don't want to see in a dark night. No, no, no. Big black eyes and big, huge head and stuff. And, oh. and wearing that tight, shiny black, like a leotard. It was like a leotard, yeah. Round neck, long, like it came all the way down to his wrists, skin tight. I think it has an emblem on the chest area. Do you have any memory of what that logo was? Some kind of a triangle, perhaps. A circle, a triangle, I don't know. How far do you think the being was from you at that moment in the craft? About 50 yards. Okay, so this craft and this being were no more than about 150 feet from you on your deck. Yeah, I saw it very clearly, yes. How long do you think that the being and the craft were there at about 150 feet from you? A few minutes. All in all, it was about two and a half, three minutes. Did you talk with the people next door that you saw the purple beam come down on their house? No, I didn't. I just thought they would thought I was crazy. Isn't that sad that we can't even talk with each other about something as important as what you have experienced? It is. What is it that you would like to see happen between humans and these greys, and what do you expect to happen? That's a good question. Um, and I just hope that they are peaceful beings. But my gut feeling is I felt protective of the earth. What are you doing here? You haven't you just turned up unannounced? Like anybody who would turn up unannounced at your doorstep. Like, who are you? What the hell what are you doing here? That was my feeling at the time. He kind of smiled and kind of made peace. He said to say, you know, okay, you've seen me. And he kind of waved. It wasn't like, you know, he gave me an evil look. He joke with me, he poked out his tongue. Even though I found that kind of weird, <laughs> you know, he didn't offend me. He was trying to make a joke with me. You know, I wish I'd shown him more emotion or more welcome, which I didn't. But Chris, you were afraid. Yeah, I was in shock. Just frozen, you know, what are you doing here? Thanks for listening to this Earth Files podcast from the edges of science, environment, and real X-Files. Go to www.earthfiles.com to see more than a thousand Earth Files reports with photographs, drawings, and documents. And visit Earth Files every day, every week for new reports and new podcasts. 
That's www.earthfiles.com. 